Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Eisenstein, Eisenstein effect. effect. I'm your host, Vicki Eisenstein, and this is my guest, Kevin Mullaney. Kevin is the artistic director of Under the Gun Theater, which we are at right now. He also hosts an amazing podcast full of all sorts of resources for improvisers called the Improv Resource Center. Get it? Resources for improvisers sure. and a resource. Yep. It's like if you go to a library. It's like a community center, but only online. Would you think of it as like a community center on a kibbutz in Israel or a community center at a college? Here? Probably more like a college. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just had to ask that. But like a, one that only the nerds hang out in. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Morton, Illinois, originally. Oh, Morton. Not Morton Grove. Not Morton Grove, no. It's a little town just outside of Peoria. Oh, okay. By Peoria. How exotic. <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> uh, after high school, I went to the University of Illinois in mm -hmm. Champaign-Urbana. Oh, by the corn. That's right. Well, <laughs> my house was by the corn, so it wasn't much different. I do know at one point you ended up in New York. Was that after graduating? Yeah, so when I graduated from uh, University of Illinois, I moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to London for a year, but then I moved to Chicago and I uh, started to pursue acting mm -hmm. and got involved in improv. Uh, I was at Improv Olympic, which is now I.O. Mm -hmm. I was there for five years, six okay. years, something like that. And then I moved to New York uh, to work for the Upright Citizens Brigade. Oh, fun. Okay. Now, what were you doing in London? Well, I, I had actually, my junior year, I'd spent abroad uh -huh. uh, at the University College London. Oh, okay. Uh, studying English and comparative literature. Ooh. And when I graduated from college, I found mm -hmm. out about a program where you can get a work visa. So I went to London and I worked at the headquarters for this uh, women's clothing store chain called Richards. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and I decided how many shirts and blouses, or how many blouses and skirts and dresses were sent to different... Oh, so you were uh, kind of like inventory logistics and stuff. Yeah, I, can't, I think I was in charge of blouses and skirts. Or maybe they called <laughs> them separates skirts. or something. I don't remember what it was, but I would, be, I would get these like spreadsheets mm -hmm. of data of where what was selling from what store, and then I would have to decide how many more mm -hmm. of a particular item to send to a store. Gotcha. That makes any sense. Do you ever, like, if you're ever stressed in your life, is this what the topic of your stress dreams is? Like, oh no, I don't have enough bosses going to stress no. for sure. Oh no. No, it was a very <laughs> low like stress. Be. Okay. It's a very low stress. I never got complaints. There weren't complaints like okay. stores calling me up and mm -hmm. I'm like, why don't we get more of these? You weren't involved in theater though over there. Was, no, I was. That's actually where I started. So when I went to London, they had a drama society as part of the student count, like the student union. Mm -hmm. And they put on shows every week. Okay. They had a little black box theater. It used to be a squash court. Oh, uh, okay. It's the perfect size. If you could ever have the opportunity to, uh, to convert it like a squash court into a theater, it's an excellent size for a small theater. I think theater. we got some at my gym. I'll ask them about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, and it sat like 30 people or something uh -huh. like that. And um, they had a different show every week of the year. Oh, and wow. you could propose to direct anything you wanted in there. Okay. So people did, uh, you know, I directed a pincher play. Like the, the first play I ever directed was um, The Homecoming by Harold Pinter, which is a horribly difficult play. Is to, it really? I mean, it's, it's very, it's a complicated play. The stuff gets heavy, right? It's very, very heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's very much, you know, part a, a part of English culture. It's you mm -hmm. know set on the East End of London, mm -hmm. and the characters are, are primarily Cockney. And I know nothing about any of this. So, and I decide oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna direct Pinter. Give it a go, yeah. So you're was relying on your native actors. Yeah. To <laughs> and I cast a guy from New Zealand as one of the Cockney brothers. Oh. Didn't even realize that he, he was from New Zealand. All those accents that. sound the same. <laughs> When you're 20 and you're from Morton, Illinois, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Impetus to come back? Yeah. Well, I was, I, I didn't come here back directly. Mm. So I was in New York for about seven years mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it very much. I knew that it was about time for me to move on and start something else. Mm -hmm. Whether that was moving to California because they had a theater in, in LA by this time, mm -hmm. or whether it meant starting my own theater or my own uh, company in New York or something. Uh -huh. Anyway, so I was on the verge of doing that, and then mm -hmm. my uh, my parents got ill. 
Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, at first that wasn't a disaster because my dad, it meant my dad wanted to spend the winter in Arizona uh -huh. and that he needed somebody to drive him to Arizona. Okay. So I drove my dad to Arizona uh -huh. and stayed with him over the winter to be his driver. And every day we went to the casino and played poker. Really? Okay. Uh, so that really wasn't a horrible experience. That was a now, I know you really like poker. Is that when you started to get into it, or were no, you already? No, I had. I mean, I'd always played poker as a uh -huh. kid and stuff. But when I was uh, at, shortly after I moved to New York, mm -hmm. uh, the family discovered that my dad was a was playing poker. He was retired mm -hmm. and going to casinos and playing poker. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, why don't I take you to a casino and we'll play poker. Okay. So we drove to Connecticut and he, on the way, he uh, gave me a tutorial on how mm -hmm. to play Texas Hold'em, which was, is the primary game they play. Mm -hmm. And I played for a few hours and I won like $150 my first Yay! day. Yay! <laughs> um, and You're they, like, I'm doing this for life. <laughs> well, that was basically, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we went to another casino the next day. Uh -huh. Same thing happened. I won a couple hundred dollars at this nice. low level table. And, uh, and I was hooked. Yeah. I'd always liked poker and I'd like games like it, but it, I suddenly became convinced that I had some gift or that I was, per, you know. So you think like, the improv skills help with like a face mask or something or, or like do you find yourself using those skills while you're at the table? Eventually, yeah. When I got much, much better I would try things that would uh -huh. that would were connected to that. I think it had much more to do with just games and uh, you know, I was much more of a geek when I was a kid mm -hmm. and I was very you know, a math honor student and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a science honor student, so I loved logic okay. and, and math mm -hmm. and and the improbability and game theory. Are you one of those people who can like do like the probabilities and count cards and stuff in your head? I'm not that good at it. I think I could do it. I could solve most math problems you have for me with pen and paper. I could mm -hmm. figure it out, and I like that. But I'm not somebody who does math in my head very okay. easily. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about poker is, it's not so much about doing math on the mm -hmm. fly. It's about knowing what the math is. Okay. So like knowing a certain situ there are certain situations that show up over and over and over again mm -hmm. and you need to know what your odds of winning that situation yeah. are. And it's just something more to know and understand mm -hmm. how it works rather than to be able to calculate that okay. at the time. A lot of times things, very unusual things will happen in poker mm -hmm. and if you haven't played a lot you will take those things much harder if, they're, if you lose because of it yeah. or you will allow yourself to get too excited or make too much of it if you win. Interesting. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a situation where that happened to me twice in the same day. Um, you, you start with two cards in poker mm -hmm. and then there's uh, and hold them and you get three cards in the middle mm -hmm. and then there's a fourth card and there's a fifth card. Gotcha. And so we're at the stage of the hand where there's three cards in the middle, uh -huh. I have two cards in my hand, yeah. my opponent has two cards in their hand. Mm -hmm. And I, at this moment, I have the best possible hand. Mm -hmm. I have, there's a queen on the board, I have two queens in my hand, mm -hmm. I have three queens, there's nothing better that anyone could have. Okay. And we both managed to put in, it was something like $500 each. It was uh -huh. a lot of money yeah. for, you know, for anybody. It so he's like, probably got something too that he's like... He does, he has, but he has like, a pair, I don't know why he, this guy decided to do it, but he had like a pair of jacks. Okay. So the only way he can win is if another jack shows up on the turn and another jack turns up on the river. So he has yeah. to have the next two cards, mm -hmm. both have to be jacks for him mm -hmm. to win. And we had put a, a ton of money in and we turned our cards over and the next card was a jack and the next card was a jack. No! So what? I lost like a thousand dollars. On that what? moment. Oh my and, gosh. And that's devastating, really, in that and moment. How on earth could that, that's such a low probability of that actually happening, yes. right? But oh my God. if you play as much poker as I played, uh -huh. it's inevitable that that's going to happen. At some point. Yeah, it's, and it's just, it sometimes happens. And to me, it happened twice in one day. Uh, and so, crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, you were mentioning then that you know you like poker, you like games and stuff, and I know you brought something you're super into. Yeah, I've, I've I, you know, I've probably only played it half a dozen times, but it's an uh -huh. excellent game, and I'm actually, um, it, uh, I'm not adapting it into a show, but I'm inspired by mm -hmm. elements of it that are going to be part of a show we're doing at this theater. So cool. Um, and it's called uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf is the name of the game. Yes. Like you have uh, a werewolf card, mm -hmm. um, 
And that is just, you are essentially the villain of the game if you get the werewolf card. And you're gotcha. trying to deceive everyone into believing you're not the werewolf. Okay. Uh, I'll save the drunk. Meanwhile, are you killing everybody? Uh, no, there's no, the, the only, actually the people who kill are the villagers. Oh. So it's werewolves against everyone else. Interesting. Okay. Gotcha. So how do you take something like this and then use it as inspiration for a show? Like, are you doing like a narrative structure of sorts based off this or how Yeah, it... so I was thinking about it for a while mm -hmm. and I really, uh, I really enjoyed the, there, there's something about the moment mm -hmm. when everybody's eyes are closed and the, the, there's like this recording that tells you what to do next and says, uh, vampires, wake up. And, mm -hmm. or, or werewolves wake up and see if there's other vamp uh, mm -hmm. other werewolves. So there's sort of something dramatic about that, and I yeah. thought that would be fun to to reveal that to an audience uh -huh. and not the actors. And so what we've done is we've got these archetypes from high school yeah. movies, like mm -hmm. the cheerleader, the jock, the geek, the freak. So people have chosen their archetypes, mm -hmm. um, but they don't know whether they're not they're going to be a werewolf that night. They gotcha. don't know whether they're going to be a vampire. They uh -huh. don't know whether they're going to be the slayer. Yeah. And so that is randomly given out at the beginning of the show. Okay. The audience is, is told some of it right uh -huh. away. Like the audience will know who the vampires are. Yeah. Although they won't know which is the good vampire and which is the evil oh, vampire. Okay. Um, and they will... Uh, they'll Do know your that. actors know that? They won't know each other. They'll be like standing on stage. Uh -huh. Uh, they'll stand on stage and, uh, and we'll have somebody in the booth saying, you know, werewolves, wake up and show uh -huh. the audience who you are. Gotcha. And they'll just open their, open their eyes and, uh -huh. and, you know, put up their claws or something. So the audience will see it, but everybody else's eyes will be closed. Okay. Um, and it's just a way to, it's a way to have a very structured show mm -hmm. where we kind of, like, we always know it's going to end at the big dance and mm -hmm. there's going to be a battle between the Slayer and the, and the, and the, uh, evil where uh, I'm sorry, evil vampire at the mm -hmm. at the dance, mm -hmm. um, kind of like the movie, mm -hmm. uh, the Buffy movie. Yeah. But uh, but we don't know who it is. I mean, the yeah. gym teacher could end up being the Slayer, gotcha. and the cheerleader could be the evil vampire. Mm -hmm. uh, what, am I, what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about dogs. Oh man. So I've got this little black shepherd. Um, her name is Molly, which I mm -hmm. thought was a very unique name, which apparently it isn't. Well, it's like the drug. What's that? <laughs> it's like the drug, the club drug. Well, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's also the number one. It's also the number one name given to female dogs. Really? Yeah. Wow. I think what I was thinking was I knew a lot of Mollies uh, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like there were a lot of Mollies in the improv scene 20 years ago. Okay. And the mo I liked all of the Mollies that I knew. <laughs> like they were fun. They were all of the Mollies. <laughs> no, they were just they were just like you go have a drink with Molly. Yeah, yeah. Because Molly was was fun. Molly was fun. She so your dog's fun. Yeah, I yeah. wanted I wanted uh, my dog to be a dog to like hang that. out with, out yeah. with me at the bar. That's what, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Do you have any advice for people who are like just getting into like theater and improv and all of this? What would you say to, or even to your younger self? <laughs> well, here's what I'd say. I think a lot of times people, they come to a place like Chicago mm -hmm. or New York now in LA, both are, are good choices as well to start out in comedy. Um, they'll come to a place and they'll get wrapped up in the status. Mm -hmm. uh, they will equate getting on a house team uh, with like that is a, a rung on the ladder to mm -hmm. success, whatever yeah. that means. Um, and they lose sight on the idea, I think, of what you're here in Chicago to do is become better. Mm -hmm. uh, you're here in Chicago to m make friends with people who eventually will be your professional network, I think. Uh, and you're here to, you know, just to, uh, I mean, that's the main two things, and neither of those have much to do with whether or not you're on a house team at I.O. Yeah. Uh, now, I mean, there are some opportunities like getting on a touring company or getting on a stage mm -hmm. at Second City, which are real uh, stepping stones that can definitely help you. Yeah. But not getting those things Isn't are, the are, end of the world. No, yeah. no. And it feels like it at the time, <laughs> but it's not. It, it's, it, can be a, it can be a horrible <laughs> feeling, but really, the all the people that I know who have really succeeded have succeeded not because they mm -hmm. got uh, an opportunity at Second City or certainly not because they were on a house team at I.O., mm -hmm. but because of the work that they did outside of that and the work yeah. that they did to make themselves a great performer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, 
when you, if you move to a place like Chicago or if you move to a place like New York or LA to become a comedian, always stay focused on, am I getting, becoming a better performer? Mm -hmm. Is this the kind of work that I want to do? Yeah. Are these people that I'm surrounding with myself with, are they the kind of people who are helping me become mm -hmm. a better person, a better performer? And are they going to be the kind of friends who are going to help me in 10 years? What I'd love to do now is open the floor for plugs. Do you have anything you want oh, to sure. plug? Yeah, so the show that I was just talking about, Vampire Hunter High, mm -hmm. starts in October um, here at Under the Gun Theater. Mm -hmm. um, we have a show starting, we have a show, two shows I'd love to plug that just started last weekend. Uh, if you're seeing this video in September, uh, please come see Porn Minus Porn. <laughs> which uh, what is that title <laughs> porn minus porn okay. they are staged readings of uh, porn transcribed script. porn scripts what? <laughs> but without the nudity and without the sex that's amazing <laughs> so you're just you're getting rid of all that distracting stuff and yeah. getting to why we really love porn. <laughs> exactly. Which is the plot lines, mm -hmm. the characterizations, mm, yeah. the struggles Those of the character characters. arcs, yeah. Um, <laughs> it is a hilarious show. And oh my what, god, I'm coming to see that. If you like The Bachelor, uh, we have an improvised parody of The Bachelor uh -huh. called uh, Will You Accept This Rose? Mm -hmm. which runs on Sunday nights at 9. Twitter? You on the Twitters? Uh, yep, you can follow me at I IRC Mulaney on Twitter. Great. And of course my podcast, the Improv mm -hmm. Resource Center podcast, you can find on iTunes. Thanks for joining us. The Eisenstein Effect comes out every Wednesday. We got the podcast on iTunes and we've got this YouTube video, which you might be watching or you might be listening. I don't know. It's all good. I appreciate both. Cool. Check us out on Twitter at Eisenstein EFCT because the whole word wouldn't fit. Um, and yeah, I think that's about all I want to say. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.